Let's talk now to Roger Seifert, who's a professor of industrial relations at the University of Wolverhampton. Uh, good to have you with us on the programme. Uh, so what is the UK government hoping to achieve with this planned legislation? Well, on the surface, they're simply saying that in certain services, that whether there's a strike or not, whether the strike's lawful or not, there has to be a minimum service agreement. Uh, this is something that the Conservatives discussed when Boris Johnson was mayor of London, and they've been very key, particularly in the transport sector, to curtail the right to strike. And uh, Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, uh, has called this idea a simple proposition, um, but the unions have called it undemocratic, unworkable and illegal. Uh, they're both uh, very different positions, aren't they? Where might a compromise be found? Well, there won't be a compromise in the legislation. There's no compromise to be had there. What basically uh, the unions are saying, which is based on evidence from other countries, is that when you get to the detail of actually putting into practice these uh, regulations, is they're virtually unworkable. You can't do it in any sensible way. So if you take the railways, if it's, say, 20% minimum service level, then even if everyone goes to work, you've still got only one train in five operating. So it doesn't really have a much of an impact. And if you say to a striking worker, you have to go to work and they say no, it's then up to the employer to dismiss. I can't see many employers wanting to go down that route because if they do dismiss individuals, uh, they will probably get a walk out of the rest of the workforce. So industrial relations would get much worse in those sectors. So you mentioned other countries, uh, countries like France and Spain have uh, similar legislation to this plan one in place. Uh, it, you said it was unworkable. Does it work there and how does it work if so? Uh, it doesn't work in France at all. It's just there uh, as to some extent it is here, political posturing by governments trying to look tough in the face of trade union activity. In terms of Spain and some other countries like Estonia and Hungary, it's very bitty. And it's normally associated with other issues such as outright bans. But without an outright ban on the strike, then even with these measures, in most cases, the strike will still be effective. And in the health service, it's a bit disingenuous of the government because the unions already agree a minimum service level, whether it's nurses, junior doctors or ambulance staff going on strike. Well, let's go back to the idea of a compromise then. Uh, this legislation, you think, uh, will not be it. How can an end be found to this series of strikes? Well, that's a different issue. This particular legislation will probably get stuck in the House of Lords anyway, so it's unlikely that it will be effective even this year, let alone uh, towards the summer of next year. And Labour have said they repeal it, so no one's going to uh, use it if it's going to be repealed. In terms of the current wave of strikes, most of these are in the public sector now. And there's only one way forward, and everybody knows that, and the government's got to come up with a bit more money. Not a lot more money, but a bit more money than they put on the table. Otherwise, these strikes would drag on. In the private sector, such as Royal Mail, you've got a different set of calculations where there's companies having losses, the workers are losing pay, and you'd normally expect some sort of resolution, as we had with BT early in the year, uh, uh, late last year. So it's difficult to see any stoppage in the public sector unless the government actually finds money one way or another. OK, Professor Roger Seifert from the University of Wolverhampton, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us today. Cheers.